Now, your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first. Sponsored by Conway Medical Center. A good Wednesday morning. Looking pretty good out there to start your day today. Some nice heavy downpours close to the beaches. Yesterday, those have moved their way offshore and we're dry to start our day. And we're going to be drying out a little bit more as we go throughout. So as you can see, overlooking the Myrtle Beach Boardwalk, we're looking pretty good out there. So nothing really much going on to start our day. So that's some good news there as we're going to be, again, warm and not so humid as we go throughout our day today. So right now, temperatures, as you can see, are in the 60s to 71 there in Myrtle Beach. And dew points actually are a little bit better this morning. You can start to see off to the west there where we're getting those more comfortable dew points in. So where you see the 60s and even that 71 in Myrtle Beach, again, those are going to be going down as we go throughout our morning hours. And you can see also a big temperature change from what we had this time yesterday. Anywhere from 2 to 10 degrees cooler. And again, it's going to be a little bit more comfortable. Winds are out of the northwest to start the day. They'll be shifting as we go throughout back up from the south, which is going to continue to bring back the humidity. But it won't be for the next couple of days, really, as we go into the start of the weekend. So it's still going to be comfortable for tomorrow. Today, we got 73 to 75 at 9 a.m. Mid-80s by lunch and mid-80s where you top out the beaches to near 90 inland. Coverage you can count on this morning starts now. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us on your Wednesday. This is a live look out of our downtown Florence. Everywhere it seems like it's just a calm start to the day. Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> We've got these cameras in here, these robotic cameras, and sometimes they look like they're It is real close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about six feet up in there, too. I don't know what, uh, where are yeah. you going next? That's the tower cam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, things looking pretty good. And for the rest of the week, actually, only a small chance for a shower today. The nice Thursday, Friday, but hot as we go into the weekend. So nice. getting back, Myrtle Beach hit 90 yesterday. Mm. Had a heat it index at lunch at 97 for the heat index. It was Not going to do that today, thankfully. It was warm. Yeah. That was warm. That's okay. <laughs> I, I liked it. I so. know you did. That's all that matters. <laughs> Thanks, James. Mm -hmm. Well, mayors across the country are addressing the high levels of gun violence and the steps that can be taken to protect Americans. Now, just more than two dozen mayors sent a letter to the president asking for help with America's gun violence problem. From WBTW, Patsy Kelly, Aaron Rohde, and meteorologist James Hopkins, you're watching number one News 13 this morning. Well, good Wednesday morning on your radar. Things are looking pretty good as we're not seeing any showers across the area. Across both Carolinas, things are looking nice. As you can see, we're nice. We're dry this morning. And that cold front's pushing its way slowly further away. It's still going to be close enough, though, as we go throughout our day today. Now, your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first. Sponsored by Conway Medical Center. Everybody, it's a pretty good start to your day. We're taking a live look out over Myrtle Beach right now. You can see some stubborn cloud coverage hanging out overhead. Last night we continued to see some more clouds roll into our area. A couple of people just walking along the water, enjoying that great start to the day. Unfortunately, for this afternoon, we are tracking more chances for a couple of showers and even some thunderstorms. Temperature wise, still warm, and we're still tracking more humidity moving into the region. So it's going to be a hot and humid Saturday afternoon. Afternoon, and we're going to continue to crank up the heat. Now, the good news is after today, we will kick off a little bit of a drying trend. A beautiful Sunday is on the way. I'll have your full forecast coming up. Well, coming up on News 13, a local post office engulfed in flames. What we've learned about the investigation from Horry County Fire Rescue. Plus, eviction moratoriums will end next month, while officials from SC Housing says funding to help those in need may go back to the federal government. Plus, the death toll climbs to four after a catastrophic building collapse in Florida, and crews are still searching for survivors. How long until? we know what caused the destruction next. Coverage you can count on this morning starts now. Well, this morning, crews are investigating a fire at the Long's Post Office that happened last night. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Hendricks. A viewer sent in this footage of the fire. You can see crews working to oust the large flames coming from the building. Horry County Fire Rescue was called to Highway 90 East near 905. 
from WBTW, Ashley Hendricks, and meteorologist Tony Shiveroli. You're watching number one News 13 Saturday morning. Time now, 7-11. A Minnesota judge sentenced former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin to 22 and a half years in prison for the murder of George Floyd. Floyd's death sparked nationwide protests and a global reckoning on racial justice. Esme Murphy takes us throughout key moments inside the courtroom. This is a Storm Tracker 13 weather alert day. And it is Sunday, it is Father's Day, and of course, we're going to be seeing a tropical system moving its way right into the thick of our viewing area. Thank you for joining us this morning. Let's take a check. It's Claudette, and it's tracking its way, coming towards the Carolinas. Right now, sitting and spinning its way a little bit more towards the northern sections of Alabama, getting into Georgia. But take a look at this track as we move on, getting further into our Sunday, and it's going to be trying to really skirt right there through the thick of our viewing area and really parking itself over us for a brief period, getting into the overnight period, looking into Monday. And this is going to be coming along with some severe weather impacts. We're eventually going to be seeing some stronger storms, some ice Isolated flooding as possible, stronger winds before this is all said and done and moves its way out of the region Tuesday into Wednesday. See ya out to sea. But until we get there, of course, going to be having some good impacts. And right now, also in a flash flood watch, this through tomorrow at noon. Plenty of impacts to come your way along the coast into the PD, and we will be discussing it this morning. Well, coming up on News 13, a look at the damage Claudette leaves behind in southern states as it heads towards the Carolinas. Plus, troopers are investigating a deadly bus crash with 34 passengers. What we learned so far in the investigation coming up. And the elderly population now a target for cyber hackers. How to prevent attacks from scammers next. Coverage you can count on this morning starts now. Well, thanks so much for waking up with us this Sunday, and happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I'm Ashley Hendricks. We have a lot to cover for our weather alert day, but first we start with news out of Marlboro County. This morning, state troopers are investigating a crash that killed one person on SC-79. Troopers say it happened yesterday afternoon around 4. From WBTW, Ashley Hendricks and meteorologist Tony Shiveroli. You're watching number one News 13 Saturday morning. Almost 10 minutes after 7 now, CBS News has obtained new footage of the January 6 attack on the nation's capital. In the body camera footage, an MPD officer is shoved while trying to move in a line with other officers toward a different direction. This is a News 13 update. Good morning. 26 minutes now after 8 o'clock. I'm Aaron Rohde. Help is available to those in Horry County who are struggling to pay rent. The county teamed up with the Eastern Carolina Housing Organization to provide rent assistance. The program can cover up to a year's worth of rent and utility bills. To qualify for the assistance, you must first live in Horry County, have one or two adults qualified for unemployment, or risk homelessness because of COVID-19. You must also show proof of a rental lease or agreement and earn an annual income between $34,200 and $64,500. America's biggest winemaker, that would be E.N.J. Gallo, will be building a new production facility and distribution center in Chester County. This all follows the state's decision to tweak its liquor laws, allowing Gallo to open up some tasting rooms where people can sample the wines. The building will serve as an East Coast hub for the California-based winemaker, According to Governor McMaster's office, the company will hire nearly 500 people over the next eight years. News 13 on time traffic, sponsored by Joy Law Firm. Just call Joy. Well, traffic was still looking great, as you can see across the area. Conway down through Carolina Forest on 501, still looking pretty good as uh, traffic was starting to get a little bit better, but still a little slow spot there at Carolina Forest Boulevard. 544, you're looking great. There is a slow spot there at the intersection of Forest Brook Road and Dick Pond Road. But aside from that, looking great. Nine minutes on 501 from 544 to Carolina Forest. For the PD and for the Board of Belts, you're looking pretty good with the exception of one accident on Palmetto Street near Santiago Drive. Aside from that, the rest of the area not looking too bad. 52, you have a six-minute commute from Palmetto to I-95. And now, here's meteorologist James Hopkins with Viper 13 Real-Time Radar. 
Well, things looking pretty good out there, as you can see, overlooking the inlet from the Gulfstream Cafe. Blue skies out there to start your day today. Looking great and feeling a little better, still feeling a little bit more humidity closer to the beaches, and that's why we're going to see the potential for maybe a stray storm this afternoon. We're in the mid-70s for the beaches for most of your spots inland as well. A couple spots still in the upper 60s, but again, feeling a little bit more comfortable inland already. Still a little bit of humidity at the beaches as the cold front will continue to slowly pull its way further away. And we'll see the potential for maybe a stray storm closer to the coast. Inland area is looking fantastic, but there is the potential again as we go throughout your afternoon. There's your evening commute of seeing maybe an isolated storm or two. The rest of the area looks pretty good. And then for your Thursday, lower humidity for all of us, and all of us will be dry for Thursday and for Friday. Mid 80s for the beaches, upper 80s to near 90 inland. As we're going to have a comfortable overnight, low 60s inland, upper 60s for the beaches, 86 to 89 Thursday. So temperatures not budging too much, but lower humidity makes it feel better. Friday, 86 to 92, with more humidity Friday into the start of the weekend. Now, your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first, sponsored by Conway Medical Center. Hey, my friends, just past 9 o'clock now, taking a live check. Widespread sunshine has really settled back in for the Carolinas, our neck of the woods. Looking pretty good from the PD, border belt to the beaches. A lot of clearing for you. This is going to be something we'll settle with for the short term. Take a check of your temperature situation. Myrtle Beach now all the way up to 77. North Myrtle there at 78. Conway, Carolina Forest, low 70s. Same for Marion, Dillon, Bennettsville, Florence at 76. Lumberton, you got 73. Looking on into the day, going to be seeing a nice rise of temperatures. Mid-80s for the coast, 90 for the PD. Let's see how long that sunshine will settle in. Coming up on News 13 now, more federal COVID relief money is coming to South Carolina with the governor plans for the additional funding. And a high-stakes meeting between America and Russia as the president wraps up his European tour. Coverage you can count on at 9 starts now. Thanks so much for joining us for News 13 now. I'm Patsy Kelly. Mayors across the country are addressing the high levels of gun violence and the steps that can be taken to protect Americans. Just more than two dozen mayors sent a letter to the president asking for help with America's gun violence problem after another deadly weekend of gun violence left 120 people shot and killed. From WBTW, Patsy Kelly and meteorologist Tony Chivaroli, you're watching number one, News 13 Now. Part-time job postings are topping 2019's pre-pandemic numbers, and American teens may be spending the summer making money. Employers struggling to fill jobs are looking to hire younger workers and in some cases offering more money to get them on the payroll. Elise Preston reports. Now, your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first, sponsored by Conway Medical Center. A good afternoon, everyone. Going to be seeing widespread sunshine for the region hanging in there right now. So welcome in. Thank you for joining us on this particular day, pushing through your Wednesday. Going to be looking at a lot of this. Good amount of clearing and temperatures rising now. Going to be seeing some low 80s along the Grand Strand. Myrtle Beach up towards North Myrtle, Little River. Going to be seeing Conway at 82. Marion, Dillon, right around 80. Florence, you got 82. Up towards Lumberton, now a bit toastier, 83. So, good suggestions for today with all the sun, the t-shirt, the shorts. Keep protecting that skin, staying hydrated out there. Let's roll it forward, see how long the sun's hanging around. Coverage you can count on at noon starts now. Thank you so much for joining us for local coverage you can count on on your Wednesday. I'm Aaron Rohde. So a face-to-face -face meeting between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin just ended in Geneva, Switzerland. The two leaders sat down at a time when relations between the two countries are really at a low point. Natalie Brand reports now from the White House. From WBTW, Julie Calhoun and meteorologist Tony Chivaroli, you're watching number one News 13 at noon. right now 13 minutes after now southwest airlines is still struggling with some technology issues that continue to cause delays and cancellations even so i'll start it with some problems the company faced on monday with its weather monitoring software coming up at five o'clock news 13 tracks a plan to offset the strain of new construction and how it puts it on Horry County's infrastructure. And you'll also see who could be affected by impact fees. And you'll see where in our area dozens of cats were found in filthy conditions. All that and a whole lot more coming up next at 5. 
Now, your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first. Sponsored by Conway Medical Center. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's been a beautiful day out there with lots of sunshine. A couple of showers did pop up just along the coast. We're taking a live look out at Little River right now, and you can see a bit of a split 50 50 between clear skies and sunshine and some more stubborn cloud coverage. Now, the good news is overnight tonight, we'll be continuing to see things just quiet down, mostly clear skies, and tomorrow by noon, already back up into the 80s. We're tracking lots of sunshine and an absolutely beautiful second half of your work week. We're also tracking the tropics. I love details on all of that coming up in just a bit. Coverage you can count on at 5 starts now. And thanks for joining us at 5. I'm Bob Chubet. And I'm Megan Miller. Leading tonight's local coverage you can count on. The Florence Area Humane Society says it needs your help and right now. And that's because yesterday afternoon the folks there say they found 30 to 40 cats and kittens in a single home in Florence. News 13's Lacey Lee picks up the story from there. I first saw the pictures that were posted on the Humane Society's Facebook page last night and to see the conditions that the kittens were in and the outcry from the agency, it was clear help is needed. From WBTW, Megan Miller, Bob Juban, and Chief Meteorologist Frank Johnson, you're watching number one News 13 at 5. The CDC has issued a health advisory about a spike in RSV cases across southern states. And this one includes both of our Carolinas. RSV is an infection that usually causes cold-like symptoms. It's very common for kids to get the virus in the fall or winter. Officials, though, say since we all followed pandemic protocols like mask wearing, RSV didn't spread like it normally does. Coverage you can count on at 530 starts now. And thanks so much for joining us tonight. For more local coverage you can count on, I'm Megan Miller. And I'm Annette Pegler. College student athletes in South Carolina will soon be able to make some money off their name, image, and likeness. That's all thanks to a new law signed earlier this week by Governor Henry McMaster. News 13's Matt Fortin is live tonight at Coastal Carolina University, where administrators there say this will really help the Palmetto State recruit top athletes. Good evening, Matt. Yeah, and Megan, Annette, administrators here at CCU, along with some local lawmakers, they were all part of that push to get this bill passed over in Columbia. So what does this all mean? Well, this is not a pay-for-play bill. Now, your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first, sponsored by Conway Medical Center. Happy Wednesday, everybody. After a very rainy, hot and humid stretch for the past couple of days and even some storm activity yesterday, we saw a very quiet and comfortable Wednesday afternoon. We're taking a live look out at Little River right now. You can see some of that sunshine and some blue sky, still some cloud coverage hovering over the region. But overnight tonight, we are expecting much quieter conditions. We're back down into the 60s by tomorrow morning. Beautiful clear skies to start off the day, followed by more sunshine in the afternoon. It's going to be a hot day out there with those temperatures back up into the 80s and even the 90s, but it will be staying dry for at least a little while. I'll have details on when the rain chances return coming up. Right now on News 13, a new plan to offset the impacts of construction in Horry County and who would pay for it? Plus, dozens of cats found abandoned and in filthy conditions in a local home. And why a relatively new variant of COVID-19 has state and federal health officials concerned. Coverage you can count on at 6 starts now. And thanks for joining us at 6. I'm Bob Chubet. And I'm Megan Miller. First at 6 o'clock, new development in Horry County may soon come with a bigger price tag. This week, Horry County Council voted to move its impact fee to apply to any new construction in the county. And as News 13's Taylor Hernandez reports in tonight's growth tracker, local developers say they worry this could drive business and affordable housing out of the county. A local developer tells me one of his clients has plans for construction on River Oaks Drive, but if the impact fee ordinance passes as is, they and other clients might reconsider. From WBTW, Bob Jubank, Megan Miller, Chief Meteorologist Frank Johnson, and Sports Director Chris Parks, you're watching number one, News 13 at 6. Right now, our team is following breaking news from Columbia tonight. The South Carolina Supreme Court just halted, at least temporarily, the executions of two men on death row. And News 13's Annette Pegler is here to explain why. From WBTW, Taylor Hernandez, meteorologist Brittany Trompe, and sportscaster Candace Martino, you're watching number one News 13 at 6. 
Morning. Welcome back to more local coverage you can count on. The Justice Department announced it plans to challenge Georgia's new election law in court. The department filed a lawsuit that claims the measure will disproportionately impact minority voters, and the DOJ says that was the intent of the Republican-led legislature that passed it. Natalie Brand reports tonight from the White House. Now, your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first, sponsored by Conway Medical Center. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's been a beautiful day out there, a bit on the hot and humid side, but lots of sunshine across the region. Taking a live look out at Georgetown right now, you can see the beautiful blue sky out there, just a couple of scattered clouds, but all in all, just a great end to the weekend. Checking out that satellite and radar right now, that Viper 13 real-time radar. A couple of scattered showers moving through the area. We did see a few rounds of rain here along the Grand Strand and out in the PD earlier this afternoon. Just really scattered activity as of right now. Now we are going to see more chances for some showers for your week ahead, but the rain chances do start to diminish as we look forward to tomorrow afternoon. I'll have your full forecast coming up. Coverage you can count on at 6.30 starts now. Good Sunday evening to you. I'm Taylor Hernandez. Thanks for joining us for News 13 at 630's local coverage you can count on. We've got a lot to get to tonight, so let's get right into it with an update to a story we first brought you last night on News 13 at 11. The person shot Saturday night on 14th Avenue in Myrtle Beach died at the hospital. And new tonight, the Myrtle Beach Police Department charged someone with their murder. From WBTW, Taylor Hernandez, meteorologist Brittany Trompe, and sportscaster Candace Martino, you're watching number one, News 13 at 6.30. Welcome back to more local coverage you can count on. On Thursday, police in Cobb County, Georgia, arrested a man for the murders of three people, including one golf pro. Tonight, Felicia Bolton shares new details emerging in that case. From WBTW, Taylor Hernandez, meteorologist Brittany Trumpy, and sportscaster Candace Martino. You're watching number one, News 13 at 11. Welcome back to more local coverage you can count on. The commemoration of Juneteenth, as one activist put it, was an important step in the right direction. But pressure is growing for lawmakers to get something done on voting rights legislation, especially after the passage of new voting restrictions in states like Florida and Georgia. Critics say those regulations disproportionately impact communities of color. This is a Storm Tracker 13 weather alert day. Good Sunday evening to you. I'm Taylor Hernandez. Thanks for joining us for News 13 at 630's local coverage you can count on. Well, we want to get right into weather tonight as the Grand Strands beaches are under a tropical storm warning and the rest of our area is under a tropical storm watch. Meteorologist Brittany Trumpy with me now. And Brittany, tropical depression Claudette could mean flash flooding and strong winds for us tonight, right? Yeah, that's the two main concerns is some heavy rain that's going to be falling pretty quickly through the area and also some pretty strong wind gusts. We're taking a look at that satellite and radar right now. 